Dimitri Pokadov. Dimitri Pokadov. Dimitri Pokadov. Okay. A lot more difficult to say than Ian Brown. I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't yeah. you have an easier right. name? <laughs> well, it's uh, it's pretty pretty <laughs> typical for Russia, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Welcome to GCP Life, episode number 61, for the 29th of March, 2024. GCP Life is sponsored by Mantle Group. At Mantle Group, we make your Google Cloud solutions possible. And I'm your host, Stephen Bancroft. On today's show, Azua jumps on the bandwagon. Apogee finds some momentum. Find out why you better not have any publicly exposed service account keys. Plus... NVIDIA is shaking things up in the AI wars. But before we get to any of that, I'd like to introduce the co-host of the show, Dimitri Pokadov. How are you going, Dimmy? Hey, Steve. Good. How are you? <laughs> good, mate. Good, good, good. Um, what's your fortnight look like? You been up to anything interesting? Yeah, well, uh, that um, DDD Melbourne conference that I was uh, one of the co-organizers um, yeah. just uh, finished, like just happened. So, yeah, there was a, a lot of work put into it. Um, and, yeah, so I was just, uh, that happened, and then I was just chilling after, <laughs> really. Just chilling after. Actually, we haven't had a community um, community news item for a while, so we need. I think we need to get back into the momentum of doing that and just announcing what's coming up over the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll make sure we do that for the next episode. Yep. Well, that sounds cool. What was? Did you have a talk on, or you just no, no, no? I was just yeah, I was just helping with the website. So um, yeah, it was uh, was getting into those um, lands of Next.js and uh, other JavaScript uh, fun stuff, uh, mm-hmm. which I'm not touching too much really. So yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, yeah. you were telling me a story of what happened with the UK post offices. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That that was uh, I think the that it was a closing keynote from um yeah, from the yeah. I, Ivan San. Yeah, that I really enjoyed. Probably my favorite talk from the whole conference. Um and there was like many very good talks. But that one was um I don't know cl- close to my heart. It was um, the talk was about uh, software disasters. Um and uh, one of the examples that uh, I didn't, I didn't hear before, but uh, was about uh, UK post offices, where it's like um, through like a long period of time, it's like a ten or so years, there would be like um, mul- multiple um, lo- lawsuit cases and even like a case of suicide because the balances were not actually like getting along um, at the, at the post offices because they were owned just by like a normal people, and then like. After like the ten years or so, it actually uh, was found that there was a issue, just a software issue with the post terminals, and uh, that's why the balances sometimes could just go into the negative and sometimes into positive. Um, oh, people thought they had all this money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there was, and then, well, then there was an um, article from one of the like a developers uh, from that from from that time um, at the company who 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 shipped the software. It's a big like a big international company, and yeah. So he, they just said that uh, that 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 software should should have never be released. But the, the whole yeah. idea of the talk was that as a developers, we actually have a huge impact on others' life and that sometimes we should kind of think about like what are we shipping and uh, but more 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 about like I guess speaking up and uh, making sure that um, we, we are responsible for for the code that we are writing and delivering uh-huh. yeah uh-huh. yeah and, and testing and making testing. sure that dodgy code's not getting shipped absolutely yeah um, Speaking of messing up people's lives, did you hear that some people couldn't get their McDonald's? I mean, it was yeah. horrific. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We, we, we actually we we were driving through, like trying to go to the drive-through to get to get our ice cream <laughs> ice cream cones. So yeah, the ki- the kids were very very much disappointed. Yes. Yeah. So um, 
obviously recently McDonald's has moved to Google Cloud. This is why this tweaked our interest. And they're saying it wasn't related. They had a big outage and it wasn't related to the move to Google Cloud. Uh, look, someone's uh, pushed pushed the code release and it was <laughs> the wrong thing or they've made some change. But they were, they were offline for, what they say, a good 12 hours or something. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a big outage and like especially I don't know the global, right? That's that's the most global, interesting yeah. like yeah, if it's yeah. like I don't know even like isolated to one country or I don't know, I don't know maybe multiple countries that's one thing, but global is yeah, that's that's probably huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Ima- imagine being being the person behind like <laughs> someone that pushed the code and then it's just like <laughs> You you pushed it and maybe go and grab some coffee or something. You're coming yeah. back. And it's like <laughs> they probably have one global load balancer that everything goes through, and that's what they've screwed up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, as they as they always say, they must be DNS, right? <laughs> must be DNS. <laughs> always blame DNS. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, also during the fortnight, just quickly before we do get on the news items, I, I got a couple other stories as well. But Azua now are offering free egress uh, along with Google and AWS, and that really is driven by this um, new EU ruling, um, uh, European Union regulations, uh, which the Act calls for cloud providers to abolish abolish switching charges within three years uh, to make things more open and transparent. Um, and, uh, another story which I've started to follow, um, is, uh, the Australian government's digital ID. Now, um, this is still in its infancy, but, uh, a decision has been made that, uh, it will be voluntary at this stage. Uh, so it'll be a voluntary requirement and, uh, it'll be an opt-in arrangement, I believe, initially. Um, so if you, if you don't, if you don't, and they're going to set it up so that if you don't want a digital ID, you won't be disadvantaged. But look, we've had so much discussion on this show about sites keeping IDs and keeping PII and all that. I mean, you'd be a mug not want to have um, a single point of, um, you know, a, a, a secure place where your ID is stored uh, that, you know, with an API, we'll get on to a bit of Apogee later, um, with you know that, that uh, third parties can call on you know to ident- to identify who you are, that'd be a fantastic idea. You, you don't need all this site storing your passport and your photo license and blah 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 blah. You get it all from a, a known government authority. So we're going to try and I'm going to keep tracking that story as it goes on, but uh, it's still something that's developing. Yeah, I I agree. That's a that's yeah. a great initiative. I uh, can't can't wait to be honest. I think my my driver license is the last is the last um, thing in my wallet that I that I need. Um, before it was like a PTV for the public transport, uh, the public transport yeah. in Victoria for for trains. Yeah, so now you can get this into your into your Google wallet. Um, so yeah, you don't have you don't have digital licenses in Victoria. I thought we had digital licenses. No, no. Uh, haha, Timmy, Timmy, you're missing out. Check it out. Yeah, I know uh, that. Yeah, New South so, Wales yeah, got one, New right? Wales, yeah, yeah, we have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah so yeah, um, I have a Service New South Wales uh, app here. I can unlock it with my biometrics, mm. and then um, in there I have my uh, when it loads and soon to be loading. There we go. Driver's license, driver's license, right in mm. in there like that. And I can I can sign in the clubs. I can show that to police officers. It's awfully legit. Yeah, it's yeah. it's great. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm uh, yeah. I'm very much jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't I don't carry a wallet anymore. I've got the two mostly I've got my credit card and my driver's license in there and that's it. That's all I need. Yeah. I can pay for the Opal trains with my credit card. Uh, I do have an Opal card to pay for the trains and buses, but I can pay with my credit card as well. Mm. Um, and then finally, before we do get on with the news items, I know I've said that already, but uh, I fixed the switch. I fixed the, the 3560 switch that I, was broken last week. <laughs> um, and yes, I've set it up. It's now my vSAN switch uh, for my GCVE environment. And sure enough, I opened that bad boy up. I'd never, I've never opened one of those switches up before. They're usually highly reliable. You don't need to. Took out the tiny PCB, which is the size of your credit card, up in the top corner. And yeah, the little micro switch that was soldered to the board was actually the solder joints were just broken. Um, and it was four, four pads on it. And I just resoldered that with heaps of solder. And yeah, oh. Bob's your prime minister, it's, it was working again. Nice. 
So, uh, yeah, if, you, if you're working with one of those switches, then it's, the fix is really easy. Anyone with the most basic soldering skills can, can fix that. And uh, you've got yourself a fully functional switch. I, I, I had the latest uh, firmware there for it, so I upgraded all, upgraded all the microcode and I've got all the new features and it's just a fantastic piece of gear now. Save from the rubbish bin. <laughs> yeah, amazing. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, re reuse, reduce. Um, That's so, it. Yeah, recycle. So. All right. Should we get on with the news items? Yes, yes. Plenty of interesting things. We do have some interesting things today, and uh, there's going to be a bit of talk today about uh, high-performance computing, NVIDIA, AI, all the rest of it, all the good, juicy stuff. Uh, and to kick things off, we've got uh, announcing cloud HPC toolkit for Blueprint for AI ML with Nemo framework on A3 VMs, and Nemo is going to come up a bit later as well. Uh, now, you brought this to my attention, didn't you? I mean, what's this all about? Yeah, it's basically about how to how to create a supercomputer in a in a Google Cloud if you oh. if you want to. And yeah, so you would think that such a niche thing, but this is all about having a blueprint. So if you need one, you can easily create it using like yeah, using that blueprint that uh, Google Google provided. Which is uh, just shows, I guess, how much in demand. Because I, I guess the the main purpose is probably like training LLMs and like using it for the for the for the AI purposes. And um, yeah, you just uh, because usually you would create a blueprint like a one one company would ask you, another client would ask you, third client would ask you, and ten clients ask like you would say, ah, oh, maybe we should just create something reusable for all of them. So I, I guess it just shows how much in demand. Um, uh, high, high performance computing uh, now is yeah um, so the blueprint helps you spin up HPC systems which run on A3s which we've discussed on the show before using H100 Tensor core GPU so that sort of gives you an out of the box experience right and just able to, with, a, with, a, with a flick of a wrist you can, you can spin that up and then from there you're programming your LLMs and doing your AI ML workloads yeah yeah um, percent. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting bit, I guess. If you if you look at the um, uh, at, the, at the architecture diagram in there, it's uh, it's not using GKE, which uh, I was very much surprised because you would think that it's kind of a cluster of VMs. But um, I guess because scheduler, well, it's using the different scheduler that Slurm, right? That uh, basically um, orchestrates um, orchest uh, orchest orchestrates your uh, your your instances, so that's I guess why yeah. it's like a, it's kind of a replacement for the I, I suppose like a GKE orchestrator if you use it for normal, not uh, high performance computing. Yeah, yeah, but we will get on to that later because you 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 could run Nemo on uh, GKE. Or you could run it on the new NVIDIA kit, which uh, we'll get onto later as well. But this is cool. This this helps you do that uh, straight out of the box, which is nice. Mm. Um, and another new feature that's been come online, which includes AI as well, <laughs> is just, it's just everything at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, introducing Security Command Center Enterprise, the first multi-cloud risk management solution fusing AI-powered SecOps with cloud security. Um, now I had a look at this, um, there's a little video, which I'll, I'll link uh, in, uh, in, the, in the show notes. Um, but basically what this is doing, security security teams can get a single view of their posture controls, active threats, cloud identities, data, and more while integrating remediation and issue accountability into the end-to-end -end frameworks for a converged cloud risk management platform. So it does it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it does 100%. it all. Yeah. With a, with a sprinkling of AI as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. The the one thing that I liked, and um, when I was reading that, um, well, that announcement is, uh, and it's something that I was also touching on, like last year when I was giving a talk on the DevSecOps, and um, I'm just, uh, yeah, read it from here that um, build on our Google Security Fabric, Security Command Center Enterprise can help to break down the silos of tools, teams, and data that separate cloud security and enterprise security operations. 
And that's, I believe, like we, we actually have plenty of tooling that helps you to set up very good like DevSecOps, like visibility and like, like pretty much the, from the from tools point of view, I feel like we're kind of covered, but those silos that you've got when you look at your um, dev team and your operations platforms team and then your security team, I believe that's uh, really like a, the biggest the biggest problem um, in, in, in the field. So yeah, if you, if you, in the security command center is, so the tools that, uh, where all of, all of those teams can collaborate and have visibility on, uh, what's happening and the data teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's, uh, which mm-hmm. is also, I think very important. So yeah, I, I think it's like great tool. Um, very good step forward. Um, and so this is, this is pulling all those tools together in a single pane of glass. And it's using some AI smarts to, um, well, alert or notify of those sort of highly critical and multi-vector uh, vulnerabilities that you may have in your environment. Mm, yeah, yeah. Also, by the way, I was like, uh, probably <laughs> related on the DDD Melbourne. I was like uh, chatting with uh, with a lady who is like security engineer, but now she's also teaching security um, in uh, in one of the universities. And then she, she said a very interesting thing that if you think that the, the problem starts from from um, I don't know even from, from unis because they do the security as a separate. Right, it's a separate diploma. So if you if you have your computer science where you got all your programming languages and like uh, you got all your databases and like pretty much everything, right? It covers everything except security. And security, mm, mm. you got it separate. Like it's uh, mm. not even as a separate subject, but it's like a, a, se- a separate, um, um, yes, yeah, so it's a s- separate diploma that you, you're getting. And uh, she, right. she's actually saying that this might be one of the problems. So... If you do computer science, you're not necessarily doing security, and then you, when you're coming out of the union, going to work, then uh, like you got all these different uh, security partners and other who is like trying to make what you're doing secure, which is probably not. Uh, yeah, whereas you should think from the ground mm-hmm. up, from the beginning, set out with the security mindset. It's like, yeah, sure, I could do that, but is that secure? Is that the most? Is that the secure way to do it? Yeah, yeah. Start start with that approach from the mm-hmm. beginning. Across all your disciplines, right? All your IT disciplines. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was like. And yeah, I've never thought about it. I thought, oh, well, that's actually interesting. Yeah, it's a oh, very, very oh, interesting Dimi, perspective. Dimi, coming from operations, I come from an operations background. Absolutely. That's what you think of, right? You think, yeah, th- I could, I could uh, assign everyone with a UID of zero, and give everyone root access, and that'd be great. That'd solve all the problems. But is that the most secure way to do it? Yeah. <laughs> right? Probably not. Right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. So have a look at that one. Check that one out. Uh, that's probably for the new features from Google this week. But uh, I wanted to move on here with the next sort of article. The Victorian government continues cloud shift with Google deal. So uh, Victorian government has signed a whole of government deal with Google Cloud as part of a long-term transformation of its agency's digital transformation. Now, they previously did have deals with AWS and Azure, uh, but this one specifically calls out um, access to uh, the cloud vendors, data analytics, artificial intelligence, and other capabilities, which I assume would be uh, related to data and AI as well. Yeah, I like this one. Yeah, great news, and I hope now now I'll get my digital digital driver license uh, faster. You know, yeah. <laughs> if uh, if Google is in the games, and I believe it's just matter matter of weeks, a matter of time. Well, here's the thing: New South Wales government have done it already. And you know, there's a, there was a politician at the time uh, who was actually my local member, Victor Dominello. Uh, he's a great a- advocate of digital solutions and digital transformation. He's now uh, engaged by the federal government uh, to look at, uh, you know, the ATO, Medicare, and uh, that whole schmozzle that's happening. <laughs> right? And, try, and try, I mean, if you've ever tried to navigate that, then you know, you know, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, try and streamline all of that. So. Uh, it, you know, it doesn't make sense for the Victorian government to just go and reinvent the wheel. I mean, it's it's been done. 
right? The service in South Wales knows how to do it. Uh, it's there already. They obviously, I, I, it's all would have been done with uh, modern architectures, so it, it'll be repeatable and doable again. Yeah. So let's hope they use what's there already, and it's it's quick for you guys. You can come out of the dark ages and get yourself mm. some digital licenses. Yeah. <laughs> Copy paste. That's what we want. Copy paste. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so that's a great one. And, uh, you know, for, for governments, uh, it's hard. For, for, the, for governments like this, they, they, they're clinging on to the old ways, right? They, they, if, if anything else, the governments are going to do that, right? We've got to host it ourselves. We've got to look after it ourselves. For them to sort of come around and see the, the transformation that's possible, the new way of, of doing things, uh, and to get that tick of approval, that's, that's actually a big deal for governments. Mm. Yeah, I agree. And um, I think, yeah, the, I, I, I'm actually not sure how it's, well, I'm not sure how it works on the car, but with some people who I would talk that are working on government projects, they, they're different than, you know, commercial companies. So commercial companies, some of them, they might have like a very big, you know, um, wo- workforce of like IT specialists um, with like, let's say solution architects and stuff in house and then they can use consultancies and others to like do more of like a hands-on stuff but it seems to be a little bit different with the governments um that's i guess also where there were because i heard that some projects government projects they would be like completely outsourced and then and then like they don't really go the way like it it's been planned I yeah, guess because kinds of costing a lot more. Yeah. 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 Like it said, census. Like yeah, one of the when uh, when we couldn't uh, couldn't get to it, and yeah, there were some other examples as well. But it's kind of I guess yeah, that that it, it, it seems to be like that. I know that's requirements and like you know leadership and stuff. It should come from from the actually who need the system, rather than outsource the whole thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, so they get what they want at mm. the end of the day. Yeah. 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 Cool. All right. Moving on. We mentioned Apogee before. Uh, Tipogee Telecom reduces API delivery time by 50% with Apogee. Now, I, uh, I've started on a little bit of Apogee training, so I'm about to learn all about this uh, in the old uh, cloud skills boost there. They've got a great pathway on Apogee. Uh, and some um, some labs and things like that. So go and check that out if you're not in Cloud Skills Boost. But uh, basically, Apogee allows you to build uh, APIs based on Swagger, I believe. Um, and you you can you can be crud as well. You can do all your gets and your puts and uh, <laughs> set everything up. Uh, why is this so special, Dimmy? Well, I I I believe that. Um IPG is a great product, and um, Google um, Inc. made very good choice when they when they bought it. Um, I used to work with it like uh, many many years ago in some like big um, insurance companies that were using it. But then um, back in the days, you you you'd need to install it all right on your on your servers and stuff. And uh, what Google brought in is actually added different options of how you can consume it. That IPGX, which is pretty much you know like a SaaS product, uh, whereas like control plane is running in in Google, it's uh, really just uh, uh, state of the art for API gateways, I believe, because it has all the power that IPG provides you, and that's I guess like if you compare with others, like the the functionality and the number of features, it I don't think that there is any other API gateway that can really compete but then if you go this ipg x which is pretty much you know you don't you don't need to run any infrastructure for it that's that just becomes uh, even easier i know the T- tpg that article they're using ipg hybrid which is again like right it's just another option where it's like you you actually some of the things are running like in your data center or in your in your cloud and some will be offload it to Google and so you just have more control over the data uh, and where the data resides and um, yeah so, so that's, the, that's the back-end services mm. for, for, for the APIs yeah, yeah. okay yeah, yeah 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 so yeah I, I, don't, I don't think that um, if you look for the like API gateway for like for enterprise I don't think there is much many options to be honest <laughs> mm-hmm. so if you look at more lightweight solutions there are 
yeah but uh if you're using Apigee X, it's also like very easy to to start yeah. using it. So yeah, and of course the beauty with using Apigee on on Google is it integrates with all the other Google services, the, the, the logging, the monitoring, identity and access management. It's just just all integrated out of the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's um, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And um, yeah, I love lo- love the numbers from TPG as well, and that they mentioning the fact how easy it was to to do it. Hmm. 300 underlying systems they're saying and 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 they've uh we've had a consistent experience consuming apis exposed by both tpg for internal and external consumers so they're slowly going through and pulling all their in-house systems under a single api and making it a lot easier and what they're saying uh and the kind of the point of this article is that they've been able to bring that pipelining down, that integration pipelining down from what was previously four weeks and now they do it in two weeks. So the whole front end, the whole API, the whole Google Cloud part is is all infrastructure as code and a full C- full CICD pipeline. And then their back end systems, well, they've just got to connect it up. And they're slowly going through their entire environment and doing that and bringing teams on board to do that. A lot simpler, a lot quicker. Uh, and, and obviously a lot cheaper as well in the long run. Yeah, and I guess yeah. Uh, to um, just to highlight one one more time that uh, yeah, they they like most of the infra is still right Amazon and AWS, but then the the fact that Google is actually very open for this this hybrid cloud idea, and they the same with the security command center enterprise that we were like just talking right uh, minutes ago. Yes, it's uh, right. That it's it's, it's supports yeah. all it's all multi cloud. Yeah. The same with Apigee. Like it doesn't matter where your backend is running. That's like you can just use Apigee as a as a service and plug it in, which is I believe it's great. And it's just that there's no no feeling of vendor lock-in as well. It's like, if let's say it would say, ah, if you want Apigee with all the features, ah, then you need to run backend on like on Google Cloud. And then, you know, it's just, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a, it, it's a, it's a healthy kind of practice of doing that. And we're glad that Google is not going that way. Yeah. With, with uh, any, any products that they're um, delivering as part of the mm-hmm. Google Cloud. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. All right, I'll stick a link for that in the show notes. Go and have a read, although we've probably given you the, the crux of it just then. Uh, but uh, here on GCP Life, we like to issue the odd warning. Uh, and, and, Jimmy, you got, a, you got a little surprise email coming to your inbox recently um, about exposed service keys. Um, now, I will link uh, to a blog article um, where um, John Wago discusses this problem because he had the same thing. But uh, basically, Google do not want you to have uh, service account keys exposed in your repos anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, another um, step forward um, to, make, to make sure that uh, all, all your systems are secure. Um, well, I guess start, starting with that, and that's very, I guess, um, it's a good next step. Um, probably the next step would be eliminating any service account keys altogether because with a um, workload identity federation, which is um, probably you try to use by default um, instead of um, using service account keys. But uh, but before, before workload identities, you didn't really have... Um, many options uh, so service account keys would be the default options that you'll opt in for but uh, yeah the fact that uh, Google is now scanning like public repositories and like other places and if they found your service account key then by default they will actually disable it and then yeah this is the so, thing so yeah. yeah so that's that's uh, that's very I, I know very very, <laughs> very bold I would say but uh, I believe that's a that's a right direction. So just don't don't expose your service account keys, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the crux of it is, as you said there, if if you have a Google service account key in a public repo, and it is discovered by Google, they will disable that service account key. Yeah. Yeah. So regardless of what your app's doing or what your thing you require, 
Um, stuff's going to break. <laughs> Stuff is going to break. <laughs> this is why they're giving you plenty of chance to do this. Um, this is happening from June 16 this year. Uh, and the letter goes on to say something of the effect, uh, we're writing to let you know that Google is introducing an organizational policy change on June 16. This change allows organization administrators to define how Google Cloud should respond if we become aware that a private Surface account key has been publicly exposed. Um, and then they go on to say, uh, you know, service account keys must be kept private, blah, 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 as, as we've heard before. Um, so they're integrating um, with several programs, including GitHub scanning. Uh, and I, I assume they'll be scanning other uh, publicly available source repos as well. Yeah. I also like, I like the options for this org policy. So the default one is disable key, which will disable, but the other option called uh, wait for abuse. So it's, just <laughs> 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 so it's not like a, you know, like a turn off or disable or something. It's like wait for abuse. It's just like, yeah. So it's, uh, it's going to happen just a matter of time. So it's better to, yeah. you know, get, get, get something broken now and like rotate your key or make sure that you're not using it rather than just wait for the time when uh, yeah, someone do, will do use it, it. Do it in a controlled way, right? Mm, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Before you end up on the news. Yeah. Now, now if like you have outage, you will need to check DNS and then your service account keys. <laughs> <laughs> Always check DNS first. <laughs> yeah. All right, enough uh, chatter. Let's get on with the AI wars. Uh, All right, uh, first thing, first cave off the ring, NVIDIA have thrown down the gauntlet uh, and they've released the Blackwell platform. Go and have a look at this thing. This is mind-bending what this thing can do. So... Where do you start with this, Timmy? I, there's a, I, the, this came to my attention uh, via a video on YouTube that had Jensen doing his, uh, you know, perform, the performance on stage, and uh, they go into so, so, so Blackwell's a uh, it's actually it's a platform, not not a it, not a CPU or a GPU per se. It's an entire platform. You can get this thing in a in a in a rack system, and there's a backbone and there's a whole integration that goes along with it. Um, but the the core of this uh, of this uh, Blackwell environment is the NVIDIA B GB two hundred Grace Blackwell super chip. Right, this connects two NVIDIA B two hundred Tensor Core GPUs. Now we talked about the uh, the Tensor Core was it the one hundred just just a minute ago. Um, this thing is twenty five times faster. Right, so just just gather that for a second, uh, and it's two stuck together, uh, and they're stuck together with uh, TensorCore GPUs to the NVIDIA Grace CPU with an over 900 gig per second ultra low NV chip to chip interconnect. So NVIDIA don't care about the laws of physics; they just you know up the throughput and make it work somehow, right? Somehow. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah if you. If you just um, yeah read what it means, it's just like a trillion parameter large language models, which is yeah, it's just it, the, stupid, right? Yeah. Like the the numbers are mind bending. Yeah. One trillion parameter. Yeah. Well, that's that's actually yeah. To another another funny story from my DDD, I was uh, I was speaking to like a c senior software dev, and uh, apparently mm. he just uh, three months ago he started studying uh, you know ele electrician electrician um, electrical engineering yeah electrical engineering yeah, yeah because yeah. you're saying yeah. uh, in five years time no one will need well at least no one will need the same amount of software engineers that we have now. And uh, uh, yeah, the machines the machines will be programming yeah. themselves. Yeah, <laughs> and when when I'm reading those this like articles like this, where it's like yeah, you know, just uh, um, yeah, trillion parameter large language models, and like the the pace, it's all evolving. It's you just uh, yeah, you start believing. Maybe I should pick something for myself as well. <laughs> yeah, the, the I mean the H100 tensor GPUs. 
we reported on those shows, not le- those CPUs on this show, not less than a year ago, and that was a big deal when they came out. Now we're talking B two hundred tensor cores, uh, twenty five times the ability. Uh, so the, 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 it goes on. They've got some got some numbers here in the chip uh, pack with two hundred and eighty billion. That's billion with a B transistors. Yeah. Just just take that in for a second. Two, two rectile limit GPU dies connected by 10 terabits per second chip-to-chip link in a single unified GPU. I mean, I mean, how many frames are you going to get with that when you play your, uh, <laughs> your Fortnite? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the other positive uh, on that one is that it's uh, 25 times less cost and energy consumption. I'm uh, very happy that uh, this is actually also um, uh, taken into consideration when developing. So it's not just you know um, getting getting numbers up, but uh, also a bit of care about planet. Yeah, that's right. It does cost less to run it and uh, less power. Now, uh, interesting sort of sidebar. Uh, I was listening to another podcast, Skeptic, Skeptics Guide to the Universe. If you if you're into science at all. Uh, go and have a listen. That's one of the longest running podcasts on the web. I'll give them a free plug. They recently did an article, covered a story on uh, the global power consumption. Now, the interesting thing is um, for the last sort of 30, 40 years, the global power consumption has remained constant. And why is that, right? Yes, we are consuming more power, but we're getting uh, we're getting efficiency efficiency returns. So things like LED lights, mm. right? They use less power, right? Everything's becoming more and more efficient, right? But yes, overall there are more things consuming power, but everything's becoming more efficient. So the consumption level has remained steady. Now, in the last sort of five years, or sort of even very recent, the last two three years, suddenly there's a peak in power consumption. Why is that? <laughs> right. Well, two big things you can think of, right? Data centers and AI, right? Things like this and electric vehicles, right? So suddenly we're starting to see this peak in demand that's occurring. Uh, let's hope we can sort that out with renewables and bring that back to a flat curve. But uh, yeah, as you say, it is nice to see that they are considering the power consumption because, you know, it's expensive to run these things. <laughs> yeah, I'm percent. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll link the video from uh, Jensen uh, in NVIDIA and uh, boy, oh boy, I just, this is, no one is coming close to what these guys are producing in computing at the moment. Uh, and of course, if you've got all that computing power, you're going to need something to run on it. And that's where Nemo comes in. Now here we're going to talk about Nemo running on GKE, but I don't see why you couldn't run uh, Nemo on your Blackwell, uh, inf- <laughs> Blackwell infrastructure as well. Yes, yeah. So what's Nemo all about? We mentioned it earlier on the top of the show, but we talked about the blueprint for Nemo. But uh, here we've got Nemo running on GKE. How's this different? Yeah, well, the, the Nemo is like specifically, it's all well, the first thing that it's open source, but it's specifically built for developing uh, enterprise-grade generative AI models, um, which is great. And again, it's like a software and hardware stack, right? That it's uh, all using NVIDIA. Um, state of the art technology. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a complete complete package, and you can use GKE to to run it, uh, which is again, I guess, state of the art managed Kubernetes cluster. Um, that uh, so you don't you don't need to, to worry about um, how you about all your horizontal 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 scaling. I suppose that's what uh, the GKE will give you. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you can install Nima and uh, do all your AI in there. Because you're not running this on daggy old, uh, you know, x86 architecture or AMD machines, right? You, you, you're you spinning up A3 nodes. You probably want a lot of SSD. You're using H100 Tensor GPU. So it's not a standard GKE cluster in that sense, right? Nemo helps you build that out a lot more easily. Am, am I am I grokking that right? Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Yes, it's like yeah. it's using yeah different different scheduler um, there as well. Yeah, yeah. so that's a kind of custom build. Yeah, 
Right. So this is exactly the sort of thing they will be using on on Blackwell. Uh, and at the end of the day, I mean, what is it? Just a bunch of Python scripts <laughs> and a bit of PyTorch? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, yes, uh, ten, TensorFlow and Py, PyTorch, yeah. And, uh, yeah okay. <laughs> off, off, off you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just opening the repo up here. What do we got? We got uh, Bootstrap set up. Oh, there's a bunch of Terraform. Oh, I'm good with that. <laughs> okay, so, uh, and uh, yeah, you got some modules there. Um, A3, there you go. Um, yeah, so it just all spins it up with Terraform uh, and you're good to go. I just got to get someone else to pay the bill, and you're fine. <laughs> yeah, that's a, about, about the bill. That's yeah, that's uh, interesting because it's also like it's available on marketplace, right? So you can you can like install it from marketplace into your into your GCP project <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, start start crunching. Yeah, <laughs> start ingesting all that data and training your models. Yeah, excellent. All right, so go and have a look at that. Uh, it certainly grabbed our interest. Um, but I am seeing oh, a healthy uh, 48 minutes on the timer here, uh, Dimi. So we might have to get out of here. What do you reckon? Yeah, sounds good. Um, Excellent. Don't forget, uh, you can go to iTunes, write a review for the show. You can contact the show, gcplife at kasdan.com.au. And once you go to our YouTube channel, you find that pretty easily. Just just uh, go to YouTube, search for GCP Life, and start the discussion there. Uh, every episode will have a discussion thread. Uh, and don't forget, today's sponsor is Mantle Group. At Mantle Group, we make your Google Cloud solutions possible. Is that about it, Dimmy? We got anything else to add? No. I think we got it perfect. You got it perfect. We got it per- perfect as always. All right, we're out of here. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Uh, yeah, how's Ian? Um... He was down here last weekend for our big housewarming party. Uh, yeah, he hired a uh, a big twin axle caravan, and he was he drove down from Queensland down to here, and was uh, going around, you know, checking things out. Spent some time at Umina Caravan Park, which is in my neck of the woods now. Uh, said he loved it there, and then he was uh, a couple of days later he was back up at Coffs Harbour which is like a, up on the north coast of New South Wales. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, he seems to be having a good time.